Moving on then to before we accept an audit. So be careful in the exam that it's not just about um, what we do when we're accepting. What else do we think of before accepting, okay? And the key is to make sure that they're not high risk. And when we talk about high risk, we mean high audit risk, the risk that we might get the opinion wrong. And we might get the opinion wrong because the client has is inherently risky because it's a cash-based business. It might be that they have going concern problems and therefore when we say it's a going concern or not, that's a real big judgmental thing. We might get the opinion wrong. It might be that they have very poor controls. And again, that would make it risky for us to make sure that the accounts are free from material misstatements. Anyway, let's have a look. So, how do we know all these things? Get to know our client, get to know their business, get to know them personally, get to know their internal controls. Obviously, if they're involved in illegal acts, we do not accept the audit. If they're in a depressed industry, then again, there may be some going concern problems. Uh, so we won't know whether they will be going concern. That's going to take a lot of judgment and make it a high risk audit. Um, we're not saying don't take these high risk audits on, but just be careful. Make sure the fee is high enough for us. Do they regularly change auditor? That's a bad sign. Why are the auditors always leaving? Is it always to do, do with arguments with them, disagreements? Similarly, have they had many qualified reports, meaning that they're just not giving right, the right information and auditors have had to qualify their reports? Do they understand their responsibilities? It's one of the preconditions of an audit. Um, directors must understand that. If you get clients who seem reluctant to take on their responsibilities, then you cannot uh, take on the audit. Okay, and similarly, are the management trustworthy? So let's have a look at the procedures, which are the ones that people tend to know well in the exam. Uh, you have to speak to the client to get permission to contact the old auditor, and if they refuse, then we can't take the job on. We ask the old auditor for any reasons not to accept, and if they don't reply, we can still accept, but they just become a high-risk client. And don't forget the ethics. Are we independent? We obviously cannot go auditing our brother's company. And do we have the skills? Do we have the resources? Are we of a big enough size to deal with the audit? So what are these preconditions? Comes up a lot in the exam. What needs to be there in order for an audit to actually take place? Well, there needs to be a suitable, an acceptable, an appropriate financial reporting framework. It has to be suitable for its needs, for the users. You know, how are these accounts being used? If they're being used for investors in Europe, then maybe IFRSs or the European local gap would be fine, but any other sort of gap would be odd. So is it suitable, first of all? If it's not, we don't do the audit. Do management accept their responsibilities? Now, it might be that they don't know what their responsibilities are, so you discuss it with them and you say, look, this is what you have to do and you have to accept it. If they don't accept it, again, we cannot take the audit on. And then also what we have to think about is... Uh, do they give us access to the records as well? They need to give us access to the records. If they don't give us access to the records, then again, we cannot take the audit on.